One of the consequences of the drought we're having here in Nova Scotia is that the apple trees that we have on our property, while they've produced good apples, especially in uh, light of the fact that they've had very little water, are dropping their fruit quite a bit earlier than they should. Uh, so this leaves a big windfall of apples on the ground. And one of the things that you can do with that, rather than letting it go to waste, is to collect it and turn it into something useful like apple wine. In order to make the apple wine, you'll need several ingredients, most important of which is apples, enough to fill about a five gallon uh, jug or bucket. You'll need nine lemons, about a kilogram of golden raisins, eight kilograms of sugar and yeast. The first step is to gather enough apples to fill a five gallon bucket. And what you want to do then is chop them up. I've chopped these ones up into quarters, throw them into the bucket and added enough boiling water to cover the apples. It doesn't take a lot because the bucket is mostly full of apples. After that you let it set for several days and you stir it a couple times a day. These apples have been setting for about three or four days, uh, maybe five at this point. As you can see they look pretty, pretty rotten but right underneath them is the liquid that will form the basis for the wine. So the, the hot water and the fermentation that takes place with the apples in the bucket releases uh, the liquid from the apples and that will be the basis for the wine. And after you have uh, a good stew of fermenting apples, the first thing to do is to strain the apples out. Now you can pour the apples through a strainer or you can just simply scoop them out of the bucket with something that will separate the liquid from the apple mush itself. It's important as a first step before you start any of this stuff to thoroughly wash and sterilize all the gear that you'll be using. So that's what it looks like when all of the apples are taken out. You're left with about a half of a five gallon bucket worth of uh, apple juice and apple water. The apples that we've strained out will just be thrown into the compost and then we can make apple wine from the leftover concentrate here. So the next step is to add the other ingredients that uh, go into the wine. Uh, primarily, or initially, the sugar. So we've got eight kilograms of sugar we need to add. It looks like a lot for this amount of liquid, but once the ingredients win, are in, we top it back up again with a little bit of water to bring it back up to the proper volume. So that's the level now that uh, the wine base is at after the sugar is added. You'll notice it's about three quarters of the way up the bucket now, as opposed to about half, uh, which was the, what was left when you strained the apples out before. Uh, it's also much thicker and it's surrounded by hornets now. So if you're doing this outside, work quickly. After you add the sugar, the next step is to uh, half and juice nine lemons into the mix. Seeds can leave a really bitter taste in things. So I like to use a strainer to strain the seeds out of the juice that I'm adding to the mix. So that's the last lemon that's going in. And then we just take the, uh, the seeds that are left, put those in the compost bucket along with all the other uh, fruit waste that we've accumulated and give everything a good stir. It's important as you're doing this, after you add the sugar, or as you add the sugar rather, and you get the lemons, to stir this vigorously. And you don't want things to settle on the bottom. It's a pretty uh, viscous mixture here to begin with. It gets thicker with everything you add. And so after the lemons, the next step is to add the, uh, the raisins. And I admit this is a recipe that I stole from another website. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description below. 
I'm not sure exactly what the point of the lemons and the raisins are other than flavor. I'm not a huge raisin fan myself, but I'm going to try to stick to the original plan for this recipe to see how it turns out. So these are just normal golden uh, seedless raisins. And again, you just add those and stir everything nicely together. And then finally, we add the yeast. Now I'm using a champagne yeast. I'm using a little bit less than what's called for for the volume uh, for this amount of liquid. And that's specifically because I, I don't want to make apple champagne. I want to make something a little bit lighter. I don't know if that actually works out in terms of the, yeast, the amount of yeast correlating with how strong something is, but we're going to try it. Oh, don't do it in the wind. See that's starting to froth a little bit already and you stir that in really, really well. It's pretty crowded in there now with the, the raisins, the apple juice, and the, the lemon juice. Pretty thick mixture. You can transfer your mixture into another container uh, to let it ferment. Use a uh, a food grain piece of tubing, make sure it's sterilized along with everything else. Set the container that's receiving the wine mixture lower than the bucket that you're siphoning it from. And gravity will do the work and take all of your mixture down where it needs to go.